Welcome to Acoustic Worship Service. Tonight, we join the shepherds. Tonight, we join Mary and Joseph. Tonight, we join all the people in Bethlehem asleep at the time as the Lord Jesus came into the world. Luke 2 says, And the shepherds were staying in the fields. And suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of God's glory surrounded them. So we pray as we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ that the glory of the Lord shall surround you and your families. But as we celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, that you shall encounter him in a wonderful way. Welcome. bring you great joy to all the people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped in snuggling strips of cloth and lying in a manger. So join us. Let's sing holy is the Lord God Almighty, the Savior.
suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of other armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's go and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Tell somebody about Jesus. Make sure it doesn't end with you. Make sure it begins with you. Tell somebody about Jesus. Glory to the finishing strong as we come to the last Sunday of the year 2021 I pray that you and I will determine to finish strong I am particularly intrigued by the life of the Apostle Paul I'm intrigued at how he kept going and going and going regardless of the many odds that was stacked against him for instance listen to this this is his own testimony in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11 from verse 24 to verse 27. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. Talk of a man who was in danger. I have labored and toiled, and I've often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst, and I've gone, often gone without food. I have been cold, and naked it doesn't sound like a very attractive life but that was the life of the Apostle Paul gives us a sneak peek into his life and to the tribulations he went through but what intrigues me is how he kept going and going and going regardless of what he was up against this is truly the testimony of a man who finished strong and just in case you are doubting Read his own account in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8, where he talks about, I have kept the good fight. I have kept the faith. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. This is truly a man who finished strong. But you know the beauty about the Apostle Paul is that he was a man of like passion. He finished strong, so you and I have every reason to finish strong because we are just ordinary people like the Apostle Paul. He was no angel. He was just a normal human being. I think of this passage of scripture drawn from the book of Acts of the Apostle. When the Apostle Paul was shipwrecked, and he went into this shipwreck as a prisoner because he had appealed to go to Caesar. You remember, the Jews had wanted him uh, to be given over to them when he appeared before Festus. And the Jews were pressing that he be sent to Jerusalem. But Paul, knowing that the Jews were up to some mischief, he appealed to go to Caesar. And Festus said, okay, you've appealed to Caesar, to Caesar you will go. So on his last and fourth missionary journey, on his way to Rome, 
he runs into a, a storm in the sea. And the writer of the book of Acts, this is uh, Luke, recounts for us a very interesting episode in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27, from verse 20, 20 to verse 25. Listen to what it says. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. After they had gone for a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have spared yourselves this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep up your courage, because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. When you listen to the Apostle Paul in this account, you wonder, was he really a prisoner? He speaks like captain. He's stuck in charge and he's giving instructions. And you wonder, was he very presumptuous? Was it about his personality? Why would he rise to the occasion and begin to give instructions at a time when everybody was despairing? What is it about the Apostle Paul that made him keep going and going and going, regardless of the odds that were stacked against him, whether it was death, whether it was persecution, whether it was betrayal, whatever he was up against, he was able to surmount all manner of challenges and indeed finish strong. I made some three observations when I uh, look at the, the life of the Apostle Paul. The first observation that I made about his life that contributed to him finishing strong was his convictions born out of God's word. His convictions born out of God's word. In the previous chapter, chapter 26, he appears before King Agrippa and he begins to give a testimony or a defense. The Jews had accused him of all manner of things. But as he appears before King Agrippa, he recounts his Damascus experience and says the way he was on his way to Damascus to persecute the church and then he encountered that heavenly vision. And he tells King Agrippa, I could not be disobedient to the heavenly vision. Again and again you find the Apostle Paul making reference to this encounter he had on the road to Damascus where God spoke to him vividly, audibly, and that formed the basis of his ministry. Again and again you find the Apostle Paul in his missionary journeys. There are times he would want to enter a particular city or a particular area, but the Spirit of God would restrain him. And he kept referring to, to the conviction of God's word. The Apostle Paul was able to surmount the various challenges he faced in ministry because he had a conviction that was born of God's word. When everybody else was preaching to the Jews, he had a conviction to preach to the Gentiles. And on one occasion, he tells us in Galatians, the way he had to go to Jerusalem to just check with the other apostles whether he, had, he was running in vain. Because he says he went before them and laid before them this revelation that he had received 14 years before he went down to Jerusalem. But you can see that the Apostle Paul's conviction was anchored in God's word. My prayer for you is that you too will finish strong because you have formed solid convictions that are based in God's word. You see, he appears to the fellow prisoners, about 260 of them, when everybody was scared that they were about to lose their lives, he tells them, no, 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 guys, you are not going to lose your life. He tells them, listen, last night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, do not be afraid. You must stand trial before Caesar and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up the courage, men. For I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. The Apostle Paul knew that though they were shipwrecked, 
His life was not going to end in the sea, but it was going to end on the shore. He knew that he was going to make it to Rome because God had appeared to him by night and spoken to him through an angelic voice that he was not going to lose his life in this shipwreck. He had a conviction that was rock solid in God's word. If you need to finish strong, my brother, my sister, develop a conviction that is rooted in God's word. But secondly, a courage born of obedience to God's voice. God had called the apostle Paul and told him that he would be an apostle to the Gentiles. He was sending him to the Gentiles, then to the Jews. And he obeyed this instruction. And throughout the book of Acts of the Apostles, you find the apostle Paul obeying God's instructions one after the other. And there's a courage that came upon the apostle Paul out of obedience. There's a courage that is born out of obeying God's word. This is the kind of courage that you and I need to surmount whatever challenges that life may throw at us, whatever challenges that may stand in the way of finishing strong. You need the courage that is born out of obeying God's word. You see, when you obey God's instruction in small things, your courage to obey him in big things grows. Show me a man who is courageous in big things where God is concerned, and I'll show you a man and I'll show you a woman who is courageous in small things. So for you to develop courage, learn to obey God in the small things that he asks you to do because courage grows as we obey God. See, the angel tells him, do not be afraid. You see, God does not waste his words. God is not verbose. Absolutely not. God speaks precisely. His words are a prescription for the situations that we may be going through. So when God tells the Apostle Paul, do not be afraid, it means he was afraid. How did he respond? He responded with courage because God had spoken to him and he knew I would rather obey God because I know that as I obey him, courage will arise. You know, there are times when God asks you to do something and you may be fearful, but I came to, to tell you, do it even if you're afraid, do it afraid. And as you do it, as you obey God afraid, courage from God, from that act of obedience, will grow up, will develop and spring forth, and you'll be surprised the things you will do and finish strong. But finally, how was the Apostle Paul able to finish strong? Acts chapter 28 is, a very, uh, uh, is an amazing passage of scripture. The Apostle Paul finally lands in, in Rome after three days, the first thing he does is to call for the believers and he begins to preach. You see, this tells me he was committed to God's mission. God tells him that this ship will be destroyed, but that God has given him the lives of the people that are, are sailing with him. And I can see the excitement that welled up in the Apostle Paul's heart because God was telling him, I have given you the lives of these men in this ship. As soon as he lands in Rome, he begins to preach. You know, it's the same apostle who says, Woe unto me if I do not preach the gospel. The apostle Paul's commitment to God's mission was something that carried him over the obstacles that life threw at him. And he was able to finish strong. You want to finish strong? You must have a conviction that is rooted in God's word. You must have a courage that is born of obedience to God's voice but you must also have a commitment to God's mission. It's when you do God's mission that you realize how fulfilling life can be. And that's when you realize the opportunity that God brings your way to finish strong. I want to pray for you that for the remaining days of this year, God will give you all that it takes to finish and to finish strong. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to call on your name this day. Thank you for the year 2021 that it has been. And we thank you that as we stand at the threshold of a new year, I pray that you may help us to finish strong. Some of us may be feeling weak and about to throw in the towel because of the 
impact and the storm, the storms that came our way in the year 2021. But Father, we call upon your name that you may grant us the grace, the boldness and the courage to finish and to finish strong. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you richly. My name is Patrick Cuchillo from Sitam Church Online. Heels and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go, 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 go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go, 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 go tell it on the mountain. Feliz Navidad, Prospero Año, Felicidad. Sing it with me. Feliz Navidad. I 
wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry, Merry. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. Merry, Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. See you in 2022. Wow.